He claims under oath that he has more than 50 more so paintings. And here's your typical spirit bear, young Thunderbird, exoskeleton style. Come on, I'll show you some more. I have probably th around 35 Norval Morrisel paintings. This is your typical Norval Morrisel style too. There's the bird protecting the nest from the evil snake. He gives all these paintings away to family and friends to be used as tax benefits. He sued me for putting an image of his painting on the internet. Anybody who has called my works fake, I've taken the court. Oh, here we go, here. How do you know this is a real Morisot? Well, all the colors mesh in together, and the theme is consistent with Christianity, smallpox, and all that. Was this the color scheme that he was using in this period? Well, I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not an expert, but if you just look at it, you say, okay, this painting just makes sense. That's how you can know. It's like a cover band. Anybody can play a Rolling Stones song after it's been created. But before that, who can do that? That's the genius of Norval Horso. And that one there, you see how it's dry and faded. Well, it's faded because it's 30-year-old painting, 40-year-old painting, which would make sense, right? It's a canvas painting, makes sense. And then there'll be typically a title. The Jesuit, 1977. Often there's a copyright symbol, and sometimes there will be some little symbol like a Thunderbird, for example. And that's a little mini Thunderbird, so. And I do know that David Voss's father was a jail guard in Kenora. And a lot of the jail guards had paintings from Norval Morisot. So that's the source of the paintings from Potter Auctions that I know of. We wrote to Corrections Canada and asked them whether, in fact, there was a Voss, a Dieter Voss, who had been um, a guard there at any time during those years. And they responded and said that there had not. If they're trying to trash his legacy, what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to tell people, if you have a Norval Morisot, it's a real Norval Morisot and there are no fakes out there. And all this stuff is a bunch of nonsense. Someone told me the story about Norval. I mean, Norval was a great artist and the real deal, and yeah. here's a great Canadian artist being trashed. It's funny. People are questioning the authenticity yeah. of his work when it shouldn't be an issue at all. No. That's basically what it is. Yeah. So. yeah. A man named Joseph Otavnik, who was totally unknown to me, emailed me, emailed all the other members of the society, and emailed their uh, bosses complaining that we were defaming Morisot and we were basically ignorant people who were involved in mischief. It, it was a direct threat that, that we could be sued for what we were doing. It's a shame. Yeah, it is. We've been fighting shame. a long time over this. A lot of years, a lot of money. Those with a vested interest in selling what I consider to be fake Morisos will contact any company or organization I work with and threaten them with lawsuits. We're contacting all your sponsors. We're going to destroy your reputation on the internet. I was being accused of being part of some sort of a Richie Robinson conspiracy, which of course wasn't true at all. Just being called out on the internet that I am guilty of cultural genocide against the First Nations. It's just like putting a target on my back. Someone had thrown a brick through the front window of the Kinsman Robinson Gallery. I said, who did this? Our video showed a car driving up in front and, so and someone getting out of it, but the image was not defined enough to be able to identify the person. At that time, I was under severe stress. Even my life had been threatened. Well, we got to do something about this guy. Don Robinson, are you listening? What you going to do when they come for you? That made me feel... <clears throat> it's not only a mental harassment, but there was also a, a physical danger that was really present at that time. I've seen on the 
Richie Sinclair. That yes. freaking scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> well, first the Otavnik threats by having people hunting me down and are going to find you. And meanwhile, I'm like, I'm not even hiding. If I had six months to live, I'd shoot that fucker. Yeah. I did. If I, if I had six months to live, I'd shoot him. Who? Richie Sinclair. If I had six, oh, yeah, for sure. I do. I'd be doing society a favor. That man ruined a lot of people's lives for no reason. I ended up having a stroke, which left me as one of the characteristics uh, completely blind in the right eye. <clears throat> he thought we were going to run away and, and just bury our heads in the sand, but we didn't. We fought back. I realized that there was probably around 3,000 fake paintings out there, and they were selling in the range of $10,000. We're talking $30 million. This is the greatest art scam by far in all, in all Canadian history. There have always been fakes by famous painters, but none of them that even begin to be on this scale. 3,000 fake paintings is a lot of fake paintings. So I'm not surprised that many, many people opposed our view that the paintings were fakes.